Hello, everyone. Thank you for logging in and uh, for the help. Um, for this information session uh, for advanced certificate in project management. My name is uh, Dr. Memory Ndanka. I'm the program director for this certificate program. And for today, we'll be covering, um, we'll be giving you information about the, this exciting program. We will share details of how to apply and what's required uh, in the application process. And I am also joined for this presentation by one of the professors who is actually teaching for us, and uh, her name is Beth. I will let her introduce herself. Hey guys, Beth Follett here. Um, I've been working with the program for quite a long time. In fact, it was it was um, when we initiated the program that that we first. Uh, helped contribute to that, took it to the Department of Education, New York State to get this wonderful program. And it was face to face, then hybrid, and now it's mostly online. So I bring to the mix a, a world of experience in project management, real life experience, as well as training and academic. And I'm delighted to be here to support uh, memory and meet all of you guys today. Thanks so much. So I uh, will share a little bit about the school, just for especially for those who are not in New York City. I've noticed in the chat, people are coming from all over. So uh, pretty much we are we were founded in uh, 2003, and we are part of the bigger CUNY system, which is the City University of New York. So there are 23 schools within uh, CUNY, and we are one of them, CUNY SPS. So as mentioned, uh, there are several programs that are offered within the school and uh, both bachelor's, master's and certificate programs. The school was ranked number 10 for on, uh, best online education. And we currently have more than 4,000 students uh, that are enrolled within uh, our programs around the uh, SPS school. So um, as you notice, uh, there are several programs that are offered, and one of them is obviously the advanced certificate that you are all here for today. So we will uh, share a little bit about that. So as Beth mentioned, it started in 2008. It's offered fully online. Uh, you do not need to have any prior experience with uh, management, uh, project management, and it's really geared towards the adult learners. We understand that um, people have lives, there are a lot of things going on, so we make it uh, more suitable for adult learners or people with careers that are, uh, that do need that, certificate, uh, that certification and that knowledge of project management. We, are, like I said, we are online, everything is asynchronous, so you can log in anytime, uh, you submit the assignments when it's due, the week opens maybe on a Monday and you're supposed to submit uh, your assignments maybe at the end of the week. So there's that flexibility of when you are able to actually do complete the assignments, which is really great for a lot of people. And one of the things is uh, the faculty are very accommodative. We have great faculty. Uh, Beth is here, she's one of the faculty in that program. So there is a lot of um, assistance you can get from the faculty. There is a lot of assistance within the program if you need uh, the help. So I will hand it over to, uh, to Beth to discuss what project management is all about. Awesome. Thank you so much, Memory. Um, it's really exciting to reflect back and see the long uh, term of this program and how many students have gone through it. And um, it's so exciting to me because I see how project management is really changing lives and transforming careers. And that's awesome. This slide here is the foundation of it all. What is project management? So the Project Management Institute is the gold standard, if you will, across the globe for project management. And it's temporary. We create a specific result that has a defined beginning and end. We have scope, we have certain resources, and project management is applying all of those skills and techniques as we manage our project. So think about your world, think about your life. You, your job, you probably have specific deliverable results. Those are projects. In life, 
we have events that we might have to plan. Um, you might do a renovation on your house. That's a project. Uh, you might be taking a trip. That's a project. And what I love about project management is it is valuable to up our skill set personally and professionally because there's so much richness and so much value in project management. So the next slide talks about our curriculum and what we've put together um, on that next slide is the curriculum for the three courses. Can you forward the slide or no? There we go, perfect. So it's three courses, a nine credit program. We start the very first one with your fundamentals. It's a very important foundational course. There is, a, it's new terms, it's new language, it's new approach. You're sometimes recognizing that it's stuff you've done, but you didn't call it the proper name, or you didn't have the framework of the project management around it. So the fundamentals of project management uh, really sets you off with a strong foundation to really excel in managing your current projects. Then we build on it the communications and leadership, um, soft skills, if you will. The, a lot of the project management feels like hard skills, budget management, schedule management, quality, risk. This adds to it those communications, your emotional intelligence, uh, dealing with conflict, building and, and forming teams. So that's PROM 601. And then we add to it a deep, deep dive into the triple constraint, the scope, the time, and the cost. And so that takes you really deep into how to really manage scope and staying on point, staying on target. How do you deal with those schedule challenges, balancing the cost and keeping quality where it needs to be, all while managing the resources and communicating and leading as you go. So those are the three courses that make up the curriculum. So you might be asking, and I see some of the text chats, which are great, how will this help me? Yeah, um, can current CUNY students apply for this course? And I promise you, memory's got some slides just for answering that question in just a minute. So do you do project management today? Well, think about it. Have you managed something specific? Did you cook a holiday dinner? Are you planning a birthday party? Did you work at your community or church to help with an event? Did you create a, um, a deliverable for your job? Maybe you're creating apps for the phone. Maybe you're doing a marketing campaign. Maybe you're doing construction blueprints. Those are all projects. And so any of those fields, and I've listed just some of them, healthcare, construction, government, not-for-profit, information technology. Uh, we've got people in the performing arts taking the curriculum, and it's tremendously helping them kind of bridge the right side of their brain, the art side of it, to the left side, a little more structure and organization to get those deliverables done. So very, very powerful across multiple disciplines, as you can see. So who should apply? Well, anybody who's interested in growing their project management skill, whether professionally or personally or both, this will give you a very strong, strong foundation for what you need to do. Um, I think back over the years, and I've been with the program since 2008, so I think back and some of the students I'm still in touch with, one of my very early students is the person who hosts and plans and manages our graduation ceremonies. And she's applied all of the skill sets and continue to improve and improve and up her game as she does that. Another one of my students a couple years back had a dream, she was in the museum program, had a dream to set up and start a specific type of museum. And she's begun that process with a charter, with a plan, getting funding. And it's so exciting to see folks really use this stuff in their world. And that's why I keep coming back, even though memory and I are new working together, but the richness of what it does for people is so powerful. And I'm 
a little bit passionate about that in case you couldn't tell. So there's an opportunity, to, if you're the kind who wants to get in and get it done, there's an opportunity to do that. You might be what we call an accidental project manager, that you just keep being asked to do things, asked to do things again and again and again, and you're, you're doing some work and you're, you're like, wow, I'm, I'm delivering things, I'm managing to a schedule, I've got to watch the budget. You didn't really have the formal training, but now you could take what you've been doing and marry it to the formal structure of project management. Maybe you're a professional and you're ready for that next career step. You're ready for to, uh, pursuing something new, something exciting. When I moved to New York City in 1989, please don't laugh. I hear you guys, you're laughing already. I was working for Metropolitan Life Insurance. I was a project manager. I had to learn the business, I had to learn the technology, and I had to learn how to manage projects. My first ever big job in New York City at One Madison Avenue was to see if this thing called the personal computer had a place in our organization. Now you're really laughing because that's, of course it has a place, everybody has a PC. Absolutely. So that was a career growth opportunity for me because I was managing that entire project for the company. Pretty incredible, pretty incredible. So if any of this piques your interest, give it a try. Go for the fundamentals and see how it works for you. So do you like to get your list and get it done? We used to have a program that it would take three full semesters to finish the curriculum. You would take 600, 601, and then 602. And then a few years ago, we decided to move toward a seven week program. And so there's a lot of positive things that, that can be done in a short period of time. So learning, you know, you're immersed in it, you're learning. Uh, the cycle time is very quick. You get real life application. You're understanding the demands. You become very efficient in that time. And you do tend to really connect with your peers because you're bouncing ideas off of them and vice versa and growing and learning together. Your employer, if they're sending you, will be happy to see you get a certificate. You could actually do it in two semesters instead of three. So that's possible. Now, the three courses that we have, just a, a note to keep in mind, the fundamentals course, especially if project management is new to you, you have options. You could go for the seven week course and know that you've got to focus in and buckle down. Or you could say, you know what? It's new to me, I'm gonna take the 15 week course and kind of pace it out a little bit more. So the seven week course is still the same amount of work, it's just in a condensed time frame. okay? And so um, you have the choice. And then the leadership and communications class and managing the triple constraints, those are seven week courses. So really great options, great opportunities for you. And now I promised memory would get to some of the admissions requirements and here we are coming up next. Oh, I forgot we had the video. Did you wanna do that? Uh it's I okay. covered everything in it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. So for the admission requirement, you uh, the program like we say the program is completely online. You do need to have a bachelor's degree, especially that this is an advanced um, project management certificate. So you do need to have your bachelor's degree already under your belt. Um, you would need to submit your official transcript and um, you need a, G, a GPA of 3.0. If your GPA does not meet the requirements, you would need to submit a personal statement just to, um, to share your experience, share your resume, what you have been doing, so that we understand why this is a good fit for you. So yes, GPA is 3.0, you need a bachelor's degree, but at the same time, if your GPA is slightly low, do not hesitate to apply. Just make sure you do explain that in your personal statement. If you have any foreign transcript, make sure that they are evaluated. 
the admissions team does a good job working with you to make sure that you, you can get your transcript and you can get them evaluated the uh, correct way that they, uh, they need uh, for you to accept your application. So those are the ways to apply. On the, my next slide, I'll share the, the, web, uh, the website and the deadline. So on, on our website, um, you can follow the application link and it will lead you right to what, it will show you everything that you need to do. The deadline for applications is May 19th if you're applying for the fall semester and you, um, it's on a rolling basis. So we pretty much get back to you um, as fast as we can. <laughs> if you complete your application in the next two weeks, you should expect maybe a week and we can have to, uh, that's like the turnaround time for us to get back to you. Then uh, I will talk a little bit about the frequently asked questions. Uh, how long will, will it take for me to end the certificate? Like Beth mentioned, right now it's probably going to take you two semesters because you are taking a seven week, um, seven week, uh, you're taking seven week classes. So you can pretty much take two in one semester and the next on the following semester. If you do decide to take the 15 week, which is really for those who do not have any like knowledge of project management and you really wanna take the time to understand um, the material and thoroughly go over everything. That's like the 15 week, that might take you a little bit longer because uh, the prerequisites for, for, all the, for the other two classes is that entry level class, the 600 level. Uh, what would the program help me? Would the program help me obtain a PMP? So that's the certification. So. The program does teach you the fundamentals, it teach you the skills, but I this is not like a prep course where it's an exam prep course to prepare you for the certification. You will need to put that extra time to be able to focus on the exam questions, the exam content, and I'll actually let Beth uh, explain a little bit more on that. If On the PMP? Yes, in, ter in terms yes, of sure. how much you would sure. need to it's prepare. That, that it stands for the Project Management Professional. It is one of the most coveted certifications um, for employees and their, their employers as well. So it requires that you have a certain level of experience. Um, it's, it anticipates that you should have three years of project management experience, have taken an appropriate uh, curriculum for studying the content, and then you sit and take the exam. And it's a, a four hour exam, pretty much hosted remote these days. There are a few testing centers starting to be open. Um, but what's kind of great is all the curriculum that we have has that underlay or the backdrop of the Project Management Institute body of knowledge so that you'll be getting those building blocks toward the PMP if that's something you wish to pursue. So the next question that's usually asked is about the GPA, but I believe I've already covered that. So if you if it is lower than 3.0, just make sure you do add in that um, personal statement explaining why. Then the next question is, is financial aid available? So traditionally, certificate programs do not offer financial aid, but there are other ways to fund your education. You can look at uh, scholarships that are available within the school or outside the school. You can also look at um, payment plans that the school offers. That way, it, it's a little bit easier to make those payment plans. Uh, how do, And the next question is, how does online learning work? So our classes are asynchronous, meaning you can check the class. It's, you don't have to be logged in at a certain time. You don't need to meet your professor specifically at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. It's flexible in, in that way. You have this flexibility to log in anytime and do your work, but still have access to your professors. They have office hours that they list on their syllabi they can meet with you that time or you can request a different time depending on your availability and their availability. So that's what makes it a little different that you have the flexibility, but you still have all the resources like, uh, in, like an in-person classroom, especially with that conduct with your professor. So that's really the main difference with uh, most fully online classes. Here we you have resources that that you need to be able to get in touch with your professors. And since Beth is here, I'll let her um, 
add more to that uh, since she's teaching also in terms of student conduct and things like that? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, so my, my particular class is I like to open up the whole class, as you mentioned. So some students want to go in and really get, a, get ahead of the game and work ahead. There is always a mix of, of content and videos and learning materials and articles, um, some type of specific deliverable assignment is, is required almost every week, I believe. Um, and so uh, I get emails from students. There's a live discussion board where we have conversations on the discussion board about the topics of the week. Uh, we also have office hours. I actually just met a student before this and uh, was kind of talking to her about some of the specific things that she wanted to go a little bit deeper into for her learning purposes. And so we do make ourselves available. So it's a, it's a really lovely approach to giving you full flexibility within a structured framework with very robust, very organized content um, that guides you literally through each step of the course. Um, it's been very, very effective. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Um, with that, we will, uh, I will share the, if you have any other questions, we will be answering questions uh, right now, but if you need contact information, you can uh, reach out to me. Uh, my email address is on the screen right now, or you can reach out to our program manager, Teresa Fasilino, and she'll be able to answer any other questions that you have. But I will answer the questions that are in the Q&A and also try to get to the questions that are in the chat. I, I do see there's a lot of um, questions in the chat, but it will be, it probably take me some time to go through the chat. So I'll start with the Q&A. So, so memory, as you're looking at the Q&A, let me, if I can just address the question on the CAPM, C-A-P-M, mm -hmm. that is also a PMI certification. It's the entry level project management certification. It's a certified project manager our certified associate in project management. And so the curriculum will also absolutely support and help with that. And the time that you spend in the course will meet, meet your time requirement for a course. Um, but the CAPM does not require the experience that the PMP does. So that addresses one of the, the comments in the chat. Okay, thank you. And, and several people keep asking, uh, do you have a bachelor's degree? I believe that was on one of your slides a bachelor's degree with a 3.0, correct? Yes. yes, it is a bachelor's degree and then 3.1. Um, it's one of the questions is, is it free? I, I, I guess it means is the program free. Unfortunately, it is not free. There are resources uh, for um, scholarships or any other funding that you can apply for, but this is a credit best and it's not, it's not uh, a free program. Can I take these courses as an incoming undergraduate senior? Uh, at this time, no, you would need to complete your undergraduate first before you apply. Is this a paid opportunity? It is not a paid opportunity. It's actually um, something that benefits you and it's not uh, a paid opportunity to, to be in the program. You would need to be paying the tuition for, for it. I am scrolling down to make sure I get all the questions. If I end my uh, BA from a CUNY school, what is the process to submit my transcript? I believe in the application process, once you start your, the application process, you can actually do put, in, put your em, employee, employee ID number, that's the student number, and they will be able to assist with pulling those transcripts into that application. And if you do uh, run into any issues, just contact the admissions office, they can assist you with that. Uh, what if you completed a bachelor's overseas, but completed an MBA in the U US, is that sufficient? Uh, yes, that, that would be sufficient. So memory, if they have a B an MBA and a BA, you take the highest last yes. degree? Yes, we consider okay. that. Because that was in the text chat also. So um, you covered it. Perfect. 
Is there a PM course for undergraduates? I did not know this is uh, for people with bachelor's. Uh, currently, there is a, there are classes that you can take for project management for undergraduate, but for this certificate program, this is uh, the advanced level. So if you need any other information on that, you can reach out to me. How much is it for, for, for one seven week class? I would need to probably pull out the tuition on the website. I don't know that from the top of my head, but if you can reach out to me, I can send you the information or at least direct you to the right person that can assist with that. Will the recording of this presentation be shared? I arrived five minutes late. Yes, the presentation is being recorded and it will be shared. It will also be posted on our YouTube channel. Is the minimum degree requirement a bachelor's degree? Yes, uh, I do see that question coming up a lot and I will continue to answer it as I see it. Is the program offered every, every semester, fall and spring? Yes, our enrollments are both uh, fall and spring, so you can start at any, at any point. After you apply, how, how do you apply for it? After you apply, how do you apply for either the seven or the 15 week? So the introductory class, oh, I think we, I, I think memory, I think there was some sort of a, a signal where we can't hear you. Maybe can you mute yourself and then unmute yourself? Maybe that works. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Thank you. so, so I'll start back on that question. After you apply, how do you apply to either the seven or the 15 week? So what happens once you apply and you get accepted, you're going to meet with an advisor. This advisor, you're assigned an advisor. The advisor will uh, work with you to show you how to apply. And then they will tell you which, which one of the sections is the seven week or the 15 week. So pretty much you do not need to do anything until you meet with that advisor. Um, it's not something that you can just do it right away once you uh, you apply. You have to, once you're accepted and you meet with your advisor, they will show you how to choose the right class for, for that um, entry level class. So like Beth mentioned, the other two classes, they are just seven week, only the first part is the 15 week. How many letters of recommendation do you advise? Do, do you advise to send? Uh, this can be two two letters. That's good enough. And obviously, if you do send the um, if you do send the uh, the the personal statement, that actually helps with your application. So you are also uh, talking about yourself, your interest, and why you are choosing uh, the to do the project management uh, certification certificate program. As you show the credits to be completed uh, are nine, all of them need to be completed in one academic year. You can take your time. It doesn't mean you can complete them in one academic year. You can do one every semester if you want, or depending on how fast you want to complete, you can stagger them, you know, take two every semester, but it's completely up to you. You, you you can decide how you want to complete that certification program. I do encourage you to not take too long because I, I think, if, especially if your goal is to go for the certification, I think once you have the content in your head, it's better to study and take the certification than waiting uh, a longer period. At least in my experience, people who wait longer, do, you hardly pass the exam. So if you do take the classes and continue to study, it will help you to remember that in the exam than waiting a little bit longer. Uh, what, if I, what if I graduate this May, can I apply? <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Yes, you can. Excuse me. So yes, if you are graduating in May, you can still apply. So 
So um, if you take the seven week course, how many hours you should dedicate per week? I will pass that question to Beth. I think she will be, um, she will do justice to the question because she knows oh, the content a little bit more. Yeah, I'm happy to. You, you have to remember you're taking 15 weeks worth of work in seven weeks. And so the expectation is you're gonna double up. So typically the bare minimum would be three hours a week on a 15 week course. That's the kind of the heuristic, if you will. And so you should expect, and unless you're a very fast reader, that you're gonna spend three to six hours on your curriculum. Um, I can tell you as a professor, I definitely spend more than six hours um, on the curriculum on a weekly basis. But you have to plan your strategy and plan your time for that. Some weeks are a little easier. Some are a little bit you know, more time consuming. But you definitely, if you do as a rule of thumb, just hold eight to 10 hours a week, you're going to be just fine. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, am I able to apply next year after I graduate? And the answer is yes. If it is, if it so happens that one is unable to complete a course, which is a seven or 15 week, are there steps for a refund? So I, when it's a seven week class, that's very challenging because the time frame for you to get a refund is like, I think two weeks into the semester, I can send you the schedule how the school operates on that. Like they have debts, like specific debts of when you can get a refund. I can share that with you. After, after it passes like a certain week, you cannot uh, be refunded. So you just have to keep that in mind. Like, you know, it might be four weeks into the semester and you, choo you, you are choosing to withdraw. You might not get a refund, but I do not have the specific dates. I can share the calendar with you. Uh, they actually do like a public calendar for the students to see when you can withdraw and when you can get uh, your refund. So I think um, one more question in the Q&A. Can we have access to the content of each course? Um, no, you cannot have content. You can probably request a syllabi to see what we cover, but you cannot have the content for the class. So that's all I see in the q and I don't know uh, if I missed anything in the chat that needs to be addressed. So there's, there's a bunch in the chat. Did you, you went through those as well? No, let me address some of those, Darian. Um, okay, go for it. So, one person is asking about, is there a final exam or assignments or submission? It's a variety. So the, the curriculum are all slightly different. Uh, so in one, you might have a quiz every week and a final exam along with assignments. Another one is a little bit more heavily assignment driven without that final exam, but with a final uh, signature assignment that really pulls everything together. So there's a variety. and looking at the syllabus would give you that insight as well. So there's that one. If I graduate in 2025, can I apply? I think the answer was yes. Yes. Um, I, the last question, how do you select the 15 week program? It's a personal preference in my opinion, if you prefer a seven week or a 15 week, the only course that you have that option is the first uh, fundamentals of project management, the PROM 600. So it's really a personal perspective. If you have that time in seven weeks to really focus in and be dedicated, that might be for you. If you wanna take it in smaller bites in a longer period of time, then the 15 week would be more appropriate. I'm just scrolling through the chat also. So I, I would say all the transcript related questions would be better in an email to you because those are very unique and individual. Does that make sense, Memory? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, so those of you who got, got transcript related questions very specific to yourself, um, 
we want to make sure we understand the whole background to answer that effectively for you. So someone is asking about the the I guess the tuition. We can uh I I guess we can pull up the website for the tuition and just put it in the chat. That will give you a you know a deficit pay credit uh, tuition rate. I cannot quote it from the top. Memory, of the if you want to look at the um, text chat, I copied it and put it in a chat okay. to the panelists. So no if that makes okay. sense, we can paste it for everybody. But I wanted to just run it by you first if I got the right section. All right, I, we don't want to hold you up. If there are no more questions, thank you for your participation. And please let us know if, if you feel like you have any question another time, just email us and we'll be happy to get back to you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you Hope guys. to see you all soon.